Hey guys, welcome back. So far we've learned about aperture and how it controls the amount of light let into the camera and the depth of field. We also learned about shutter speed, which controls how long the light is let into the camera and motion blur. All that's left in our exposure triangle is ISO. And simply put, the ISO controls the sensitivity of our sensor. Sensitive sensors? So with ISO, the higher the number, the more sensitive the sensor is. Higher numbers would be used in a darker environment, and lower numbers in a brighter environment. But let's see what happens when you have your sensor too sensitive. A more sensitive sensor leaves behind what's called image noise, or grain. Like motion blur that can be achieved with a longer shutter speed, image noise, or grain, can be a nice touch. It gives this sort of film feel, reminiscent of old film cameras, and the grain that was on the film layer itself, caused by dust or other imperfections. That leads me to another effect of an oversensitive sensor. Dust and particles and hairs that you normally wouldn't have seen are now more visible. This is also an effect of a closed aperture, with more depth of field, you see more of the little hairs and dust that you normally wouldn't see. You can of course avoid this by cleaning your sensor and your lens, and you can also remove these in post. But there is a sacrifice of clarity when you do that. And clarity is also reduced when you have more noise. So once again, it comes down to a stylistic choice. Do you leave the grain and the gritty feel, or do you light your scene better so you don't have to have such a high ISO? Higher numbers, more noise. Lower numbers, less noise. noise. So I choose to stay around 800. So if I can't achieve my correct exposure at 800, then I need to adjust my aperture while still making that stylistic choice of my depth of field. If I still can't get my exposure set with the aperture and the depth of field set how I want, and my ISO at 800, then it's time for me to adjust my shutter speed while still trying to avoid motion blur, unless that's what I'm going for. But if I still can't get it adjusting my aperture, my shutter speed, and my ISO, then it's time to look into lighting my scene better, which is another course at another time. But yeah, that's it folks, as far as ISO goes and the exposure triangle. As you can see from the example, the exposure triangle has three different settings, aperture, shutter speed, ISO. Each one has a stylistic choice that you need to make. With aperture, it's depth of field. With shutter speed, it's motion blur. With ISO, it's grain or noise. Each setting just controls light and has a stylistic choice that you need to make. And usually, if you adjust one, you're gonna have to adjust the other. And now that you know what they all do, you just need to make that stylistic choice and get out there shooting all manual. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and share it. It really does make a difference in the algorithms. If you have more questions or ideas for more videos and stuff that you guys would like to learn, leave a comment down below. And if you'd like to see more videos from me, hit the subscribe button. I just hit 100 subscribers and I couldn't be happier. Unless we get more. 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 Thanks again guys. I'm out.